The decisions of the US Congress and the UN on how to handle Syria's chemical weapons now hinge on two days of meetings starting Thursday between Secretary of State Kerry and Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov. Good morning welcome to the News Hub. I'm Michael Casey. Uh, joining us to break us down on how these meetings pan out is Greg White, our Moscow Bureau Chief. Good morning, Greg, or rather I should say good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Michael. How are you? So this is a complicated situation. Um, cl clearly the, the Russians won't be too keen on what I understand is the, the main demand from the US right here is that is to approve airstrikes uh, as a backup measure uh, at the UN Security Council. Um, tell us where they stand on this. Yeah, that certainly the, uh, this is where the details of the pro proposal from uh, this week that really changed to transform the diplomacy on the Syria situation. That this is where it all hits the, the rubber meets the road, and it's going to be uh, quite a difficult task. One of the big issues, as you mentioned, is this one of do they include in a UN Security Council resolution that would uh, cement this plan? Would any sort of uh, ultimatum or threat of free use of force against Syria for not complying? The Russians are uh, staunchly opposed to that. Uh, the French draft that was circulated earlier this week included something like that and then has, has been removed. It sounds like today's negotiations and the, for the first phase are, uh, are even uh, earlier in the process than, than that. They're just discussing the technical uh, details of, of how putting uh, serious chemical weapons under international control would take place, what steps would have to take place. I mean, this is, this is pretty remarkable. This is a country that uh, until earlier this week never actually publicly admitted that it had chemical weapons. Uh, so uh, there's an awful lot of work to be done in a oh, country with a civil war underway. And then, um, that, that issue you, you highlight there, I think, you just speaks to the trust factor. Clearly, the Americans do not trust the Syrians, and perhaps not the Russians either, that there will be compliance here. What are Russians saying about the, the, their commitment and how confident they are that, that this thing will in, indeed result in a, in a near total, at least, handover of uh, Syria's chemical weapons? Well, the Russians argue that this is uh, uh, that the Syrians have promised it, that it uh, uh, that that's how it'll be, and uh, they they argue that this is a gesture of uh, goodwill on the part of the Syrians by agreeing to this ought to be rewarded by some sort of easing the pressure from the West. Uh, that's certainly not an argument that's likely to uh, get very far with Westerners. Sorry, that's certainly not an argument that's likely to uh, get very far with Westerners. Uh, as a result, uh, there's going to be some tension here. The Russian proposal so far seems to be that the Syria starts by uh, uh, joining the Convention Against Chemical Weapons, an international convention that bans the production, storage, and use of chemical weapons, and then begin the process of declaring where all of their arsenals are and putting them under international control. That's a process, obviously, that would take a long time. Now, we've been subject here in the U.S. to some, some interest, interesting di diplomacy because, of course, last night, uh, Prime Minister, uh, President, I'm sorry, Vladimir Putin uh, ran, ran an op-ed in the New York Times kind of pleading with the American people and, and really, in some respects, try, seeking to perhaps embarrass President Obama. Um, what's your read on, on that and the motives behind it and how it might feed into this kind of brinkmanship that we're uh, seeing right now? Well, this, uh, this week has certainly been a big triumph for the uh, Kremlin and, and President Putin's uh, efforts to play a pivotal role in uh, diplomacy in Syria. Syria is Russia's biggest ally in the uh, Middle East, and Syria's been trying to, and Russia's been trying to use its uh, position throughout the crisis here to uh, uh, remain a player uh, in, on this important global issue. And with the, the U.S. strikes looming, it did be it was beginning to look like Russia had sort of run out of cards to play. So uh, then, uh, having come up with this proposal, that really transformed the situation is, is a, a huge victory and a big moment for President Putin, and they obviously want to take advantage of that and make their case directly to the West uh, through the op-ed. It is a very toughly worded uh, statement, almost to some, some commentators have suggested it's essentially a point-by-point -point rebuttal of, of President Obama's speech, uh, and, and certainly highlights a lot of the differences left uh, between the two sides on it, uh, from basic things like... Uh, uh, who they suspect is behind the uh, August 21st uh, chemical weapons attack in Syria. The Russians are, oh, when Mr. Putin noted, uh, convinced that it was the rebels who did it, something, uh, an allegation Western governments reject. And so, uh, it, it, it uh, does look as if he was smelling blood and was striking at some of the political weakness that some, some believe Obama is facing right now. Greg, thank you so much for your time. Uh, much appreciated.